Hello everyone and welcome to the first tutorial for the waterline pack for Unreal Engine 4. Um, to start off I've set up a really basic rocky shoreline level and we're going to be looking at how we can add um, a really nice custom waterline actor to it. So uh, in terms of demo preparations all I've done is uh, add and create some background uh, images and HDRI maps. In terms of world L planner we have our geometry, uh, directional light, a big sphere with a, with a background, uh, a skylight with, a, with an HDR image. Uh, for level uh, effects I have a post processing material that basically limits the exposure, uh, removes some lens flares and has a basic color look of texture. Doesn't do much but it does change, it, change the color a little bit. Um, and finally just a sphere reflection capture which I have specified at a cube map myself. So <clears throat> let's start by going into our waterline uh, content folder uh, and grabbing our waterline actors. So for this uh, le uh, level uh, we will be using the large waterline actor so let's just grab that and drag it into place. Uh, right now I would like to have a height of about 5, yeah that's about right, with the plan shoreline. Um, and as you can see now, if we were to get close to the waterline effect, none of it is showing correctly. That's because we have yet to add any materials to our slots. So uh, let's do that now. Uh, if we go to our waterline content, waterline surface materials, I'll be using the PC materials for this demonstration. So we go to the surface materials and we'll create our own instance from the uh, high preset for this. Uh, surface demo. Uh, we'll move that to the demo folder. We'll do the same for underwater surface. Underwater surface demo. And we'll grab one of the post-processing materials from here. We'll use that high preset again. It gives us the most options. Post-processing demo. And move that into our demo folder. So uh, now we're just going to quickly add all of these materials to their respective so slots. So the surface material into the water surface material slot, the underwater into the underwater one and the post-processing uh, at the last bit. And now we can see that we have the displacement, the waves, materials are lining up properly. Uh, we have yet to do pretty much anything with them. So uh, let's start uh, with some customization. If we double click on our surface ma material instance, uh, we can get uh, this menu that I'm just going to here to the side and let's go through some of the settings and what they do. Uh, roughness is pretty much self-explanatory. Uh, changes the roughness for the material, specular, metallic, opacity. Uh, surface to object blend right here is uh, how objects interact with the water. If we set it to zero we can see that we get really sharp uh, horrible looking lines when uh, geometry intersects the water. A value like 3 uh, creates a nice blend and if we want something like 5 for a bit more clearer water and shallows uh, as we start getting with these rocks uh, we could do that as well. Uh, overall water tint uh, will set the overall color of the water. Normally this is dictated by the sky so uh, we'll probably go with some sort of a blue-green type color. Yeah, something a bit more similar to this. Uh, the water shallows color is uh, the color that objects near the water surface will appear. For example, uh, if we increase the brightness now, we could see that uh, the rock visible through the water surface is a bit yellowish. We could tint that to red. Uh, blue, green, 
grade, what have you. If we increase the value to something like 5, we can increase the visibility of it. And if we lower the saturation, it'll look like uh, pure waters. Uh, for this one, I'm thinking of doing something not quite 5, but maybe something like 3. And a bit of a color to the water. Uh, the deep water color uh, dictates the color for the areas that are further away from the water surface. So if we select that and start editing it, um, we will get something like this. Uh, areas that are further away from the, from the surface are now being colored red, while uh, near the top you remain the clear color. Um, Let's keep that to some kind of a bluish color. Uh, color depth level and color blend controls the height at which this transition occurs. So we can lower it a bit more. And blend is how sharp it is. So now we're getting a very sharp uh, drastic change with this. Uh, the reason why this effect is not going further out is because of our water opacity. Uh, we can edit that and now we can see the effect going a bit further out. Uh, for this instance, I'm thinking of keeping it around 1.1. Don't want to be seeing too much. Uh, as for this color, let's make the deep waters of our lake environment sort of dark blue, dark green, I mean. Um, finally, we have a subsurface color. And as you can see right now, we don't really have one. Uh, in order for, it, for this uh, value to work properly, we need to add another one of the waterline actors. So if we go to waterline content, waterline actors, we'll grab the light direction blueprint and drop it into the level. And now you can see if we rotate that, we have uh, an area where our uh, subsurface scattering for the water will take effect. Uh, let's just move that a bit higher. And what I'm going to do now is select my current uh, light actor, grab its, uh, copy its location, uh, rotation, and paste it onto the waterline actor. And now we get um, subsurface scattering effects which matches the directional light. Uh, you could, by default, the light from uh, this actor is set to zero. You could use it by itself as its own uh, method for lighting if you wish, or you can set it to zero and just use the directionality. Uh, as for subsurface color, uh, let's pick something a bit strong for now, just so we can show the effects. Uh, below, we have the subsurface mask, and these basically dictate uh, the region that is gonna be shown uh, with this effect. So. Light mask radius will uh, expand sideways. Uh, it's like the light trail that the subsurface scattering will have. Uh, keep it a, maybe a little bit wider. Something like this. Uh, mask verticality will uh, change the uh, Z value of the actor here a little bit for additional tweaks. Uh, this can be done to increase or control uh, verticality or contrast of the uh, underwater, uh, I mean the <coughs> subsurface scattering effect and near camera fade uh, lowers this effect near the camera position as intersecting it can make it uh, sometimes look uh, not very nice. But the default value usually does a decent job of it. So uh, with all these set up, let's pick a color that's a bit more natural looking to the water. So I think we'll go with um, blue, greenish kind of tint, keeping with the environment and everything. Uh, this seems to be fine. The value of 5 here seems to be a bit high, maybe something like Two or yeah, two. Uh, just the light mask radius, bring it in a little bit, and the verticality. So next we have the wave normal tile. 
normal strength, normal speed, and normal texture. I actually would like to replace the normal texture for this one and maybe use this, which is a nicer looking, smoother uh, lake water. As for the tile, uh, I think. Uh, sorry, let me just set up a few things. A value that's a bit more similar to say 300 would work a bit better uh, with the normal strength. Uh, one will give us, oops, one will give us flat, zero uh, full. Um, I'm thinking somewhere between at around 0 0.7 will work best. And wave normal speed is how uh, quickly the texture moves. So something like 5 is a bit too strong, something like 2. 0 0.2 seems to be okay for this type of waves. Um, next, we have a value for uh, refraction, which which uh, dictates how much the normal map distorts the uh, world that's underneath the water. For example, if we were to go to something like uh, zero, we get the full-on distortion. And what this does, it, it, it also alters the appearance of the normal map near the waves. So uh, we also have a refraction distance that is set to something like, uh, say, uh, zero. You can see that the water starts looking uh, a lot less nice uh, far away. So we're basically using a value of something like uh, four or maybe even seven to clamp the effect to be more near the camera. Um, as for this, I think it's making our normal map appear a little too sharp, so a value of 0 0.5 is a bit better. Uh, tessellation, I'm not really going to go into it, it's pretty much self-explanatory. Tessellation quality is the number of iterations or triangles you want to have. The distance is uh, how, away from the, how far away from the camera the tessellation should take effect and fall off the blend between tessellated and non-tessellated uh, geometry. Uh, the use in blueprint uh, when selected by default means that the blueprint actors uh, such as displacement texture, height, speed and tile are all set via the waterline actor uh, here. So for example if we would like to change the wave height to something like uh, 20 we now get a bit more displacement, higher waves, uh, tile. If we set that to zero, we get flat waves. Uh, if we change the speed to uh, 0 0.2, we now get a lot uh, more waves. <laughs> so I think I will stick to the default values for this one. Um, let me just uh, remove the attachment here. We don't need that currently. Um, so with that said, uh, if the blueprint is not selected, these values can be edited in the old-fashioned way if you were to go into waterline content and uh, surface materials. We have a water parameters collection where um, all these values are here for you to edit. But currently everything is set by the waterline blueprint actor and uh, it's much better, quicker and more reliable to use. So we have a decent uh, water surface material. Um, next, let's have a look at our underwater surface material. So let's just open that up. Uh, duck it a little bit to the side. And uh, first of all, I just realized that... Uh, let's keep opening differently. I'm just going to disable a handful of features with the post-processing material. So, um, the ray settings, disable those. They can be a little distracting. And I think we're good so far. So, uh, the underwater surface is the appearance of this, basically. And we have the same uh, standard water parameters like roughness, which I think we're going to set to zero. Use rays now. There's something else here. Right? Let's remove. 
this as well. Okay, now it seems to be working. Um, for metallic, the underwater surface generally appears very metallic, so we're going to set that to 1. Opacity, how much of the above world we could see. I think a value of something closer to, uh, let's see, 3 might be okay. Um, Refraction, similar to the uh, previous one, how much of a distortion do we want for the outside world with one being none? I think uh, something closer to 0 0.5 would be best, uh, nothing too crazy for the other, for our lake. As for color, I'm gonna try and match that to the surface, so something like this for now. Uh, we'll go back and change these once we have a more solid build with the post-processing underwater effect. As for surface brightness, uh, what this does is uh, it changes the brightness of the above world because a lower color overlay value can sometimes make uh, the above world look too dark. We can add extra brightness boost and for now I think a value of Something like two should be okay. Uh, detail texture uh, refers to if we get close to the surface. Uh, let me just uh, adjust the tab to something a bit more visible, 12, and then boost the brightness to 30. Uh, these little these little specks are the detail texture, and they add a bit of a character to the underwater surface, like little bubbles or something that's flowing. Uh, barely visible, but they're quite nice to have. Uh, detail distance is how far away these bubbles uh, will be visible, and distance blend is the rate at which they will fade away, the smoothness of transition. Uh, ooh, yeah, that's high. That um, for waves normal, these refer to the underwater waves uh, here. Uh, as for speed, I think it's actually a bit too fast right now, so we're going to go with the 0.9 and for normal normal strength we're gonna lower that distortion a little bit more with 0.9 a nice uh, smooth sort of look uh, in terms of, of tile increase that to a bit more yeah so this is a bit better uh, the underwater post processing is giving us a really funky fall right now but we'll take care of that in a minute uh, tessellation it's pretty much the same as uh, the top material. Uh, best keep those values similar in terms of iterations, distance, and fall off. Uh, as for mesh adjustments, these uh, alter the height and blend of the overall uh, portion of the water plane that's using this material. Uh, normally, uh, you might want to have some site adjustments in the height but let's go with extreme value so now you can see the entire thing is being moved down and if we go with the mask offset uh, we can see some alterations in uh, how the underwater shader uh, post-processing material is interacting with the uh, uh, underwater surface material but for now we're gonna set those to zero as pretty much okay uh, apply standalone window fix is um, with the underwater mask offset. Uh, waterline uh, now comes with a, a apply standalone window fix that when you build a final product you should always enable, which allows for uh, the effects to scale properly in window mode. Uh, you might want to have these disabled sometimes when you're using an edit in editor as changing the viewport size can cause artifacts but for now we're going to leave it on as we're not encountering any issues I'm going to quickly demonstrate those uh, later on uh, so this is pretty much okay for our uh, underwater surface material so let's close that up uh, next let's have a look at our post-processing uh, material uh, let's start with uh, doing something about our underwater color or 
fall. Let's change the float a bit so we actually have something to work with. Uh, let's bring it a bit closer to 0 0.4 and then uh, change the transition to uh, 4 or 5 perhaps. Five and uh, yeah, so now we have a nice uh, solid color. Let's open up our uh, color correction and for underwater color let's pick a nice sort of dark color that kind of matches the world outside and nothing too bright. So now we're seeing some interesting uh, artifacts with our underwater post-processing here not aligning properly to the floor. And uh, let me just quickly demo what this uh, apply standalone is and why you should disable it sometimes. So if we now were to press F11 and go full screen, uh, the issue would disappear. But if we were to go back, we now have some pretty horrible artifacts. Uh, disabling this will fix it. So now in editor, we're working perfectly again. Uh, for final build, if you were to play in a standalone game, you should enable it and uh, everything will work perfectly. <laughs> so. Uh, now that we've taken care of this, uh, let's change uh, the, sa the saturation a bit. We could alter the colors, and in this case, maybe have um, one point three, just a little bit more than what we'd usually have. Uh, for contrast, we could change uh, that a bit. Yes, this seems fine. Um, full brightness, also a brightness setting. Uh, right now, I think we've got a pretty high set, so. Something like 0 0.2 uh, should be a little bit too dark, maybe 5. Yeah, let's go with that for now. Uh, using shallows is an interesting little uh, system that uh, we can disable for now and we'll get the full dark color. Now you can see the scene has gone a lot darker than we uh, previously hoped. Uh, so let's bring back some of the values of this here. So if we enable back the shell, we see that our scene has uh, gone considerably brighter. And that is because this adds an additional gradient in camera space to brighten up the near surface of the water. So if we were to go down, we could see it gets a bit darker. Uh, so what we're going to do with that is uh, maybe set the height to minus. 1.4, that's a bit better. Um, the blend is how uh, much it alters. So a value of uh, 20 should be fine. And the boost is how much do we want the, the near surface to be brighter. So for now, maybe just a slight change of 2. Nothing too drastic. Um, next, we have the the distance blur, uh, which adds an extra blur to objects that are far away underwater. Uh, let's just go full screen right now that we've taken care of the standalone fix. So, use blur, we'll turn on the blur. Blur quality is the number of blur samples. And blur amount is, well, how, bl how blurry we want things to get. So if we increase it to something like 13, we now see that things near the camera are quite uh, crisp, but moving away creates a giant blob. So maybe a value of 2.5 is what we're looking for. So rocks in the distance are nice and blurry and everything up close is relatively crisp. Um, right now I've disabled the rays, uh, but if we were to turn them on, we also have underwater post-processing rays. But um, right now they're not really appropriate for the slicing scene, so uh, maybe we'll leave that for another uh, tutorial. So disable these for now. Uh, waterline. This section deals with the, the giant green uh, blob that you currently see. So first of all, let's change the color to something a bit more appropriate that, that matches uh, what's currently on uh, screen. So in terms of color, this should be okay. Uh, line uh, thickness controls how thick this line is. Um, 
so maybe a value of 2.3 should be okay. And uh, this value can also be adjusted with the height. So if we bring it a bit closer to the surface, so something like 2.5. Yeah, it should be okay. Right now, editing the line can be a bit difficult, so we're just gonna go to our waterline actor, uh, go back into view, and we can set the wave speed to zero, which will pretty much pause the movement of water, allowing us to edit this a lot more clearly. So, um, water height, uh, line blur amount, and line blur height and blend. We basically have uh, another mask for blur, which um, adds uh, an additional blur to the water. So if we were to go with a value of, say, minus 16, oops. let's just have Unreal catch up a bit. Ah, there we go. Now we can see that near the bit where water uh, intersects we have an, an additional blur so this is quite a nice uh, sort of camera effect that we could have right now I think it's a little bit too much uh, maybe 0.3 that made quite a difference um, and as for the amount of blur uh, let's uh, 1.3 seems to be okay and blur blend uh, 19 have a bit of a softer transition between blurred and non-blurred water uh, finally, we have underwater mask for height and blend. And what these do is that in some cases you might want to have adjustments to the overall underwater effect, and changing these will shift everything away from the underwater mask or above it. Um, right now, maybe we can have a value of minus uh, 16. Seems to be nice. And working with a blend of 2.1, we can make this a bit blurrier or sharper. If we're looking for something uh, a bit more cleaner and crisper, I personally like uh, 2.1 quite well. Uh, it suits a nice, uh, smooth uh, transition. Uh, something that you should know when working with the large waterline actor is that doing edits such as these is always best done near the waterline uh, actor center. Where all, where the mesh and uh, post-processing material will align in editor mode. Uh, this is not something that you need to worry once your project is in play. But for example, right now, if you were to move uh, vastly to the side, we could see that the two no longer align. That is because during play, this large waterline actor will align with the currently controlled player pawn position. Uh, for the small waterline actor, this is not something you need to worry about. It will just, uh, it's a smaller actor, so it doesn't need to uh, shift along with their position. So overall, I'm quite happy with how this has turned out. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and save these. Um, close it down a bit, and uh, let's have a look. Uh, again, the water material seems to be blending quite well, uh, but the, Underwater looks a bit lifeless, so uh, let's uh, try to make it a bit better by adding one of our uh, light functions for acoustics. So the easiest way to do this would be to uh, grab the current um, directional light actor and just copy and paste it. Uh, don't worry about the brightness changing too much as we'll be adding our own uh, light function right here. Uh, the light function that I'm going to use is well, line content, um, resources, visual effects, uh, light acoustics, not the decal one for this example, and I'm going to grab a version of the function number two. So demo C. So move that to our demo folder. and add that to our actor. Right now, you're seeing that it's just going all over the level and everything, so uh, let's try and limit this. Uh, opening up the actor, perfect. 
going into full screen, we have settings for uh, brightness, the limitation of using the uh, tile and speed. Uh, so, right I seems PC to be pretty surface material. So uh, this can be fixed if you were to use the arch arch viz material that has that uses the forward renderer rendering for its translucency. But that's a very expensive uh, material. But right now, we're going to have a look at how we can fix this issue within uh, our light function. So, uh, for water height, um, we're going to select a value of something like uh, 100. And now we can see that the brightness has gone up a bit up. But as for water start, value of 1.8 should be OK. Start blend, minus 50. Depth fade and depth blend. Uh, let's go with 80. And this should be okay. So uh, with these settings, we've actually limited our um, acoustics material to be far away from the surface. As you can see now, it's a clip to the bottom. So a uh, great way to further change this is to take the brightness and maybe lower it to 0 0.01 for now. Now we can see that we've taken care of the issue here. Uh, but the effect has all but gone away. So if we were to go back uh, and select our light, let's just uh, lock it down a bit. Um, we could bring some of this back if we increase the brightness. Maybe five. Make sure that we're not getting our light shown on the water again. Uh, seems to be okay. And we seem to be having all the life back into the water. Um, so what I'm going to do next is uh, maybe play around with the settings a bit. And I will come back and show you how we could uh, take some of these reflections and take them to the next level. Right now you could see with the going next to our water, we have this beautiful giant cliffside, but as soon as we start looking down, it all disappears. So uh, let me get back to you with that. So I've done a handful of uh, small changes uh, to the surface material, mainly with the way the subsurface scattering was working. I adjusted the mask a little bit uh, and tweaked the normal texture. Um, I think I changed a little bit about the just the color for the deep and the fit and the depth color and the transition between shallow and uh, deep. Uh, but overall, it's pretty much similar, just a few more minutes of polish. So, uh, right now, if we were to look straight down, we see a great deal of our reflections are disappearing. And um, let's have a look at how we can uh, fix these. So, uh, something that I have done is that I uh, restarted the engine after going into project settings. Uh, if we just go to planar reflections for lighting, we have a global clip plane support for planar, planar reflections. Select that and your engine will restart and recompute some shaders. And uh, that's where I am now. So now that we have uh, that step enabled, we're going to go into modes and select play in our reflection and drag and drop it into our level and does it look terrible or what? But uh, that's actually to be expected. Um, it is essentially a giant uh, plane that renders everything in our scene twice as such makes uh, our reflections pretty much perfect. Uh, something that I want to do is actually uh, change the size of it so 10, 10 for it to cover the level up quite nicely. Something you should avoid doing is change the size of the z-axis as this will cause some terrible uh, artifacts. Uh, something that we can do is uh, go to primitive mode and use a show only list. So right now, if we show on the actors, we can start picking one by one our uh, skybox, uh, add another one for our uh, cliff, and one by one we can add all of our actors, but this can take some time currently. So instead of 
uh, using the show only list, which in some cases can be more efficient as you can, uh, as you can select objects that are only near uh, the edge of the water plane, we're going to use the render primitive scene and instead we're going to use hidden actors. Uh, we can add one, and with the eyedropper tool, we're going to select uh, our waterline actor. Because right now, what's happening is uh, the planar reflection was actually uh, capturing the, ref uh, the reflection of the water plane and projecting it onto itself, causing a bit of artifacts. Right now, what we're seeing is uh, the planar reflection actor itself. So if we go to hide preview plane, we can go back and now we have perfect reflections. If we were to look down, the cliff no longer disappears. Uh, everything is quite nice. Uh, this actor can be quite expensive in some cases, so be wary when you use it. Uh, we could further increase the quality of it by screen percentage if we go all the way to 100. And this will give even crisper reflections, but 50 is pretty much okay. Uh, normal distortion strength is how much should the water normals affect the distortion of the reflection. Setting that to zero gives us an extremely unnatural look where the reflections don't move with the water surface. A uh, thousand gives us uh, the largest amount, but given that this lake water is relatively smooth, I think a value of 500 should be okay. Um, and that is basically it. Um, some small adjustments you could do to the height of the plane itself, so you could get some accurate uh, reflections, where they begin and where they end. And uh, yeah, let's just have a quick look and make sure everything is okay. So, uh, we should actually Let's just do a quick uh, run through of the level in uh, play. Uh, something that I almost forgot to mention is that once you have a new level to which you have added a large borderline actor, under world settings, which you could find the uh, window world settings, you should select game override mode and add the base game mode blueprint, which will, uh, if we go to default, this is pretty much what you have. Drag and drop this and it will add the free camera palm blueprint. These are basically little dummy actors that allows you to quickly demo the large waterline actor uh, in your project. Ideally you would want to replace these with your uh, current project character palm or camera position, uh, what have you. So with this done, uh, let's, let's select our underwater post-processing material um, and just go back and add the standalone window fix uh, I believe in this case the undersurface material also has a standalone window fix so apply these save everything save current save all uh, let's hit that play button And uh, there we go, the level should start in a minute. Um, let's just wait for it to load in. So having it set like this, uh, you can see now that if we were to change the aspect ratio, um, the effect scale, uh, whoops. Uh, let's just go full screen. And now moving the camera will always align the all the effects of the post-processing material and the plane uh, perfectly. We have the underwater acoustics going very lightly through. Our reflections are looking nice. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much how you could uh, have a very quick setup with your waterline.